What? What? Shit, I'm late. Oh, Jesus, look at my hair. Ah, much better. Pfft, loads of time. It's finally here. I don't spoil anything this time, I swear. Howdy, my name is Steve, and welcome to my movie menu. And yes, the camera is still crooked. I am straight back from watching The Avengers, and... Well, it's, it's fucking awesome! Okay, you see, the, the best part about this, um, this movie itself, The Avengers Assemble, is the fact that each individual character have had their own movie franchise and everything already, so, like, you don't need to build up a backstory or anything like that, so you can just get straight into the action, which is what happens in this film. Starts I won't spoil anything. I will not spoil anything this time. There is a part I really want to spoil, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be good this time. So the entire premise is set up within the first maybe 10, 15 minutes or so with a big, massive action scene, which is always nice. Stuff that happens with S.H.I.E.L.D. and all to do with the Tesseract, the little magic cube, and it's all kind of set up from there. And then we're kind of, uh, instead of all the Avengers being together straight away, they all kind of have their own little tiny bit of a oh, this is what they're doing now, so let's go and get them, type of thing. And it's awesome. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to spoil... Oh, I really want to spoil. So there is one thing that I want to talk about um, that everybody keeps asking about is, and everybody keeps wondering, and they're very afraid of it, uh, what's the Hulk like? The Hulk is brilliant. The way he is, uh, the way he looks is really, it's really, it's really good. It's been a long time coming. And he acts really good, and in fact, he kind of acts more like a gorilla than uh, a really angry guy. And uh, Ruffalo was really good as Dr. Banner. Wasn't as tortured uh, as you'd hope from someone who has the Hulk inside him, but he was really good. He was very kind of, um, there's an awful lot of quips in this movie. An awful lot of quips. Just like little one-liners that kind of just shoot people down from what they were saying. But it's all kind of, it's pulled off kind of well, but every now and then you're like... Okay. See, there's an awful lot of quips in comics. And just kind of one like Spider-Man is realm-renowned for it. But um, in a movie, it doesn't kind of work out as well as they'd hoped. The conflicts within the group itself... Okay, everybody fights each other. Within this movie... Um... I'm gonna put up a little warning sign here for spoilers, because I'm gonna tell you who fights who. I'm not gonna tell you who wins, because no one really wins, you just fight each other. But, um, if you don't want to know who fights who, fast forward on to this time. I'm gonna put it in there, so you can just fast forward to that time in the video. If I can edit it properly. Um, Iron Man and Thor fight in the woods, then Captain America shows up, and it's fucking awesome. Um, Captain America and Iron Man are constantly at odds with each other. Um, the, the, towards the end, like, th throughout the film, there's, um, kind of a respect drawn together, so they kind of all co cohese together from a very, 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 very spoilerific moment. If I mentioned it, if I even hinted at it, and, of course, the, the matchup that I was looking forward to, oh. Thor versus Hulk, and it was exactly as you would hope for a Thor versus Hulk fight to go. Ugh. Okay, so I'm finished with all the spoilers and all that shit. Um, the I, I always when I was talking about this movie back in the day uh, to everybody who was asking me about it, um, everybody was wondering what's going to happen with the significant others within the original movies themselves. Captain America's significant other is more than likely dead because it was seventy odd years ago. Um, Natalie Portman, I, what's her name? I don't even fucking remember the name of the character she played. Um, she's mentioned about, like, three quarters of the way through the film, um, through a little photo of her, which is actually a clip from the film just cropped out on her head, which, which I know what is that part. And he, like, Nick Fury just says to Thor, oh, she's moved to a safe place, we've gotten, she, she's fine. She, she's not gonna get destroyed by all these aliens. And then Pepper Potts, okay, this is one problem that I do have with the film. Uh, when it happened, like, it just seemed really out of place. Pepper is there, she's now with Tony Stark. Uh, Happy's gone altogether. Comic book people will know what I'm talking about, but Happy is gone altogether, obviously because Jon Favreau is no longer part of the Iron Man franchise because <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. kicked him off it. Pepper Potts is now with Tony Stark, um, and the, the part when she's introduced, she's, she's wearing like short shorts, like denim short shorts. It just seemed really out of place with, um, 
with what I perceived to be the character of Pepper Potts. And there were like gratuitous moments of, oh hey look, there's her legs. Oh, and it turns out that Agent Coulson has a first name. Uh, his name is Phil. Yeah, the I'm just going to try and finish it off now as quickly as possible. Because I know you guys don't want to watch a big massive marathon session uh, like my last uh, video turned out to be. But I just had so much to complain about. Oh, that film. Ugh. Um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, anybody who was a fan of the comics would have, as soon as, you, as soon as we found out, there was going to be aliens we all thought scroll but unfortunately it's not the scroll because that would be a much deeper storyline to happen but the the army itself is um they're not the scroll that's i was very upset although there is some kind of scrolly scrolly elements about it because um loki like takes over people's heart and they become like his followers so there's a little bit of an invasion of the body snatcher type of deal thing but still not the scroll by the way um that giant snake thing that you see flowing through the trailer the big pointy thing <sighs> there's more oh and also i just got to put this out here right now the reason why i love the hulk in this film is solely for one specific moment the moment when ruffalo okay we're gonna put a spoiler just right here because there is a brilliant part that's about to, that I'm about to talk about, and it's the best part of the film. So if you want to wait till you see it, um, fast forward like another 15 seconds into the fucking video or whatever. Yeah, because I'm gonna say it right. He transforms and punches one of the serpents in the face. In the face. I'm finished now. At the end of it, um, they all do their thing and yada yada yada. They kick some ass, whatever. Uh, the only problem that I do have with it um, is some occasions from the trailer you see and you're like, huh, that hasn't happened in the movie yet. This person isn't going to die right now. So that kind of threw it off for me a little bit, but um, I've learned from past mistakes to just watch one initial teaser trailer and avoid everything else because there's been a plethora of trailers and teasers and little clips and action scenes if you if you've been on youtube and you see one of those little videos that says um like captain america versus whoever uh fight scene do not click on it because the fight scenes between the individual characters are amazing so do not do that and also for some reason the hulk is a funny bastard tom hiddleston was awesome as expected as loki um that's pretty much it. Nick Fury was Nick Fury, and Samuel L. Jackson is probably the best person. I gotta say, he probably is the best person to play this version of Nick Fury. Cheers, Marvel. Also, um, the little... I usually look out in all the Marvel movies for the parts where Stan Lee appears. And in this one, it just, I was like, oh, where the hell is Stan Lee? And then five seconds later, hey, look, there's Stan Lee. The final bit, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but at the credits. You know the way there's always a little bit at the end of the credits? It's not at the end of the full credits. Um, it's at the end of like the initial main credits or whatever, where there's a big animation of all the names and stuff. The bit after the after those credits, I'm not going to say it. Don't worry. The bit after the credits, I I was sitting back in my chair enjoying the fantastic visuals. I was like, eh, okay. Then it happened, and I was like. What? So, uh, if you're a fan of the Marvel Universe, you will know what that bit is all about. I cannot wait to talk about it. I'm putting an official embargo on myself for the next week to not talk about the specifics of this movie. Go see this film. If you liked the first couple films, the f oh, that's another thing as well. Um, the visual effects are more like Thor. Remember the way, like in Thor, the, the explosions and everything else, they had a specific look to them. Everything's more like that. And the action is more like um, the Captain America movie, in that there's an awful lot of fists and stuff like that. But um, because not many of them have projectile weapons, if you notice that, like only, well, that they can throw their weapons, but they're not specifically designed to be projectiles. Also, the widow's bite. Go see this film in theaters. It is awesome. In fact, I went this morning at ten o'clock. To see it in 3D. Oh, also, yeah, 3D, it, it doesn't make much of a difference. There's no real need to see it in 3D. It's really dark 
That's one thing I hate about 3D movies, it's very dark all the time. So, uh, 3D is not necessary to see this film. So, of course, I have to go again tonight at around about 10 o'clock to go see it in the regular version. So, get out there, see the film, and look forward to Iron Man 3 and Thor 2 and Captain America 2. Those are gonna be fucking aces. My name has been Steve. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye now.